Now it's time to welcome our next guest, Steve Archer, president of Strategic Senior Benefits Group right here in Coconut Creek, Florida. Steve, thanks for taking the effort to come in the studio to see us today. You know, it gets lonely in here sometimes just doing everybody by Skype and remote, so thank you. No, not at all. It's my pleasure, and it was, uh, it was a horrific 20-minute drive to get here. Horrific, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so listen, you know, uh, Steve, and, and you've always been a financial advisor for more than 30 years, but what a lot of our income generation viewers really don't understand is that Steve took a good part of his time and worked internally with us for years as we started teaching advisors how to promote the income model while he maintained his practice. But Steve, you got so excited about the income model that you decided that you wanted to go back and help your clients full time. Our loss is their gain, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it about the income model that makes you feel like it's so right for, for almost all retirees or people within 10 years of retirement? My, my entire 31 years in the industry really has been built on providing guarantees and security and dependability for my clients. I've always been more excited about that than looking for uh, the next great thing or the next great, uh, the next best thing since sliced bread. Sure, I'm always more, uh, I'm always more attracted to something that's dependable and predictable. Now the guarantees are great mm -hmm. because it makes you feel good. It makes you sleep at night as an advisor because yes. you know that hey, I don't have to worry about my clients losing money or they're running out of income or anything. But isn't it true also when it comes to your clients? You know, it's if you run out of money at 90, it's not that you had a great retirement all the way to age 90. And age 91, you woke up and after you blew out the birthday candles, you you're out of money and, and it, no. it got ugly then. It was all the stress and anxiety you went through emotionally leading up to age 90. Exactly. Not just for you, but for them too, is it not? It's, it's absolutely true. Yeah, it's a, it, it normally shows itself early in retirement that you're starting to invade your principal and that's what you want to avoid. The bottom line is that early in retirement you want to avoid invading principal. So a lot of folks make the, make the mistake of drawing an income from a mutual fund, for instance, and they don't understand that while they do agree that you shouldn't be invading principal, right. they don't understand that the shares of the mutual funds that they own are their principal. And so if you're selling your shares, you're invading your principal. If you're selling your shares at lower values, you're destroying your principal. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's funny. People think that, well, I'm just spending my growth. I'm really not spending my principal. I'm spending my growth. But it's a myth. It's impossible to spend growth because, like you said, if you're selling shares, you're selling them and your net worth is immediately going down. You're just crossing your fingers and toes and hoping that it grows back the next year. Exactly. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But either way, you're spending principal. So let's take a quick commercial break because we need to pay for the show somehow. And that's where our advertisers are for. So uh, we'll be back here in just a minute on the income generation. You stay with us. Now it's time to welcome back our good friend, my good friend, Steve Archer, president of Strategic Senior Benefits Group in Coconut Creek, Florida. Steve, thanks for sticking around. My pleasure. So, okay, you and I both experience the same thing, right? We talk to clients or prospective clients about this, and it becomes clear. As soon as you talk about the fact that you can't sell shares, you're invading principal, they get it. So the question is then, why isn't it intuitive before they meet with us? You know, uh, why is it sometimes people say things like, uh, it's too good to be true. I can get 5% interest in dividends. I didn't know I could do it. It's too good to be true. I, I, what do you tell those people who, who truly believe that? Well, too good to be true. I don't know. It seems to me that everything you do has good or bad. I think mm -hmm. the more important question is whether investing for income is appropriate for you. Because if it is appropriate for you in your situation, then it's not too good to be true. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people think all you can get in income is 2 or 3%. Maybe that's because the advisors that they're with that are stock market specialists, mm -hmm. they don't understand that you can get something akin to 5% net of fees. Well, and, and worse than that is that it, the majority of advisors operate in a growth-oriented mode. Mm -hmm. So the portfolios they put together may only spin off a 1% or a 2% dividend. And so as a result, the great majority of people out there who have done business with these mm -hmm. advisors feel the same way. Right. Um, this, is a, this is not yet a mainstream model. So until it becomes a mainstream model, there are going to be folks that feel that way. How about this myth? Well, if you want me to increase my income, that means I must have to increase my risk. I don't want to do that. Well, you've already stated what the income model can generate. And if we look back to 2000, the S&P 500 has returned less than 4%. So apparently taking more risk didn't pay a bigger return. Mm. So really, you're saying that, yeah, they're reducing their risk to get more income. You don't yes. have to increase your risk to get more income. You reduce your risk. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. So part of what we were up against all the time, whether it's trying to talk to advisors about adopting the income model or even talking to our clients one at a time with the income model, um, is breaking the stock market addiction mm -hmm. that comes from people having developed their investment paradigm in the 80s and 90s, the best stock market in U.S. history. Yeah. 45 seconds. What are some of the best things that you found to explain to people to get them to break that stock market addiction? Well, number one, it's very, very difficult because it's born from a fear of missing out. Uh, that's where it all starts. FOMO, okay, mm -hmm. fear of missing out. For sure, yes. Um, but the, the bigger issue is how, if a person understands how they can lose a lot of money in the market, then they might be more likely to look into working against the addiction. Uh, for instance, you know, if the market goes down by 5% and a person sees that their 401k balance has dropped a little bit, they say, okay, now I have to stay in until it gets back up to where it was. Mm -hmm. They say the same thing until 10 or 12%. At 15%, they start to get a little bit desperate, but they feel like if they sell now, they've certainly lost their money. And they get caught in this, in this situation where they become paralyzed. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I say is, okay, look, if, you, if you've identified an amount of income that you need, determine the amount of money that's necessary to generate that income, carve that out, start there. Start so break there. the addiction in stages is what I would say. Education. It's education like everything else for we sure. do. So yes. thanks so much for coming to the studio. We really appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. we got a lot more left here on the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll be right back.